Okay, so in this video, I want to look at the four different types of errors that you can get in C++. So that's the compile time, link time, run time, and logic errors. So let's go over to Eclipse and take a look at a small program in which we'll exhibit all four of these errors. Okay, so let's take a look at this program where we're going to ask the user to input some number of toys and also some number of kids. And then we're going to figure out how many toys we could allocate evenly to each kid. So we can see here in our main function where we actually ask the user to enter in the number of toys. Then we're going to store that value into an integer variable called toys. And we do the same basic operation with kids. And then if we have uh, our toys being greater than the number of kids, then what we'll do is we'll say each kid can have, and then we'll call this function uh, kids per toy, which will calculate the number of toys uh, per kid. And we'll output that to the user otherwise else we'll say that there's not enough toys for each kid. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, compile this program and see if we get any sort of errors. So again, we're looking for compile time, link time, run time, and logic errors. So we'll go here and, and build this. And so whenever we build this particular program, it says uh, we have an error, and it says expected comma or semicolon before C out. So let me go ahead and double click on this. So if you go down to the console here where it reports the warnings and errors, and you double click on a particular error or warning, it'll actually take you to the line where it's expecting uh, something different than what you've provided. So if we look at this particular line of code here, we'll find out that there's really not much wrong with this. There's nothing wrong with this line of code. It actually turns out that the line of code above it, it has the problem, and we missed a semicolon here. So let me go ahead and put that semicolon in. And a lot of times when you get compile time uh, error messages, they may not make much sense in the actual error. You know, it may report an error on line 105, and the error is actually on line 35 for whatever reason. So this is just going to be something that requires a little bit of investigation and looking at. So if you're having a lot of problems with a particular error that you're getting from the compiler, I would recommend going online and searching for a solution. A lot of times you will find forums or other sites that may list out several uh, different errors for a particular language, and it may provide a better explanation. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this, and we'll compile or build it once again. And this time, we didn't get any compile time errors, but we got an undefined reference to this function toys per kid. So this is a link time error. It was expecting us to have some particular function definition for this function that we declared. So we declared the function. Here we called the function. But we never had an actual function definition. So this was a link time error. So we can just uh, define this particular function. So we'll say int. Uh, toys per kid, we pass in an int, and I'll just abbreviate toys as t, another int uh, k, I guess you could put kids, so we'll go ahead and put toys and kids in here. So these are actually separate variables from the toys and kids up here, so these in memory would be uh, two different values, they just happen to have the same name. And here we'll just simply return the expression of toys divided by kids. So we're just simply dividing the number of toys by the number of kids. So let's go ahead and uh, save that and build it again. So that's compiling and linking. And this time we did not get any type of compile time errors or link time errors. Um, just as you did with the uh, compile time errors, you can also go online and search for uh, link time errors. Okay, so now that we've got everything compiling and linking, we can actually run this program. Let's go ahead and, and run it. And it says enter the number of toys. And we'll say that we have 10 toys. And we'll say that in this particular case, uh, maybe no kids showed up to receive any toys. So we're going to try to allot each kid with the same number of toys, but no kids showed up. So we're going to put in zero. And whenever we try to do this operation here, we actually crash our program. We end up with a runtime error in this case. I'm going to go ahead and close this program. We should be able to stay, into, stay in Eclipse. So basically just terminated our program, but we ended up with a runtime error because we had to divide by zero. Since our number of toys was 10 and the number of kids was zero, we divided by zero, which was undefined, and that's what crashed our program. It did not know how to handle that. So that would be an example of a runtime error. So let's go ahead and uh, maybe change up our code here and just put in a condition to say if um, kids 
is greater than zero, then we'll do this do these operations here. So I'm going to just uh, select all this code here and tab it over and uh, come down and do that. And then I'm going to put an else statement in here and maybe say uh, see out. Um, uh, no kids showed up. Showed up for the toys. Okay. So that's what we'll output to the user uh, if, if it turns out that there's zero kids. So we're performing that check to see if the kids is greater than uh, zero. If that's not the case, we'll just say no kids showed up. Now, we're still not checking to see if uh, a negative value was inputted. You know, if a negative value was inputted, we could say that um, we would still be saying no kids showed up. And in reality, that's really not what we should be saying. We should ensure that non-negative values were inputted for toys and kids. So you would have to set up maybe a do-while loop around toys and kids to ensure that you don't get any negative values to validate that input. Okay, so let's do... Uh, one more run, and we'll save this and build it. Okay, so the changes we made didn't result in any sort of compile time or link time errors. So we'll run this program again. And this time we're going to put in uh, 10 toys, and we'll put in 10 kids. And it says, not enough toys for each kid. So if you go back and look at the way we constructed this, we had this test, this condition set up to see if toys was greater than kids, and then we would calculate how much uh, each kid would, how many toys each kid would get. Um, and that's not necessarily what we should be doing, because if we had the same number of toys and kids as we did in this case, each one of the kids could still get one toy. But we're having it output not enough toys for each kid. So let's go ahead and maybe change this. This would be a, a case of a logic error. Everything was okay in terms of us compiling, linking. We didn't get a runtime error, but we didn't get the result of what we expected. And this is the case with logic errors. Whenever we run our program somewhere, the way we were thinking about this program and the way we constructed it, everything was okay, but the logic was just bad. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to greater than or equal to uh, kids. So go ahead and build this again. So compiling and linking. We didn't get any compile or link time problems, and we'll run it again, and we'll test it out. So 10 and 10. So in this case, it says each kid can have one toy, and that's what we would expect if we had the same number of toys and kids. Uh, this is some just simple examples of, you know, run time, compile time, link time, and logic errors. There's some other logic errors in terms of us validating the input here. But this gives you just an example of the different types of errors that you can get in C++ and how you can go about correcting them. Uh, when you first start programming in C++, most of your errors are probably going to be related to compile time or link time errors. It may be a problem with your syntax. You may be having issues with the uh, types being mismatched, what you're asking for for a particular variable and what was being inputted, you know, could be something very different. Um, this could happen at runtime as well. Um, you may have some sort of issue with asking for a particular type and the user inputs a string instead of a, uh, a floating point value or something like that and it's not able to handle that input at, at runtime. So usually when you first start programming it's compile time and link time problems. Uh, then you'll get into more runtime issues and then you'll spend most of your time once you become comfortable with a particular language just looking at logic errors and spending your time figuring out where did your logic go wrong. All right, so that's it for this video.